Level zero, absolute zero, no detectable radiation. This is the baseline. Theoretically, level zero represents a state of complete radiation absence. No ionizing particles, no background noise, not even the faintest blip on a Geiger counter. But here's the catch. On Earth, this level doesn't really exist. Even in the most shielded environments, like deep underground laboratories or thick lead bunkers designed for high sensitivity experiments, there's still some radiation seeping through. Microscopic traces from the materials around us, the Earth itself, or even our own bodies. In fact, your body contains tiny amounts of radioactive potassium and carbon. Just being alive means you're radioactive, minimally, but measurably. So achieving level zero is more of a scientific ideal than a practical reality. To truly get close to zero, you'd need extreme conditions. Buried hundreds of meters underground, inside a vacuum-sealed chamber, surrounded by dense shielding. Even then, cosmic particles occasionally make it through. Still, level zero is important because it sets the lower boundary. Every other level will explore builds from this point. The jump from almost nothing to something is steeper than it sounds. And while this level sounds safe, and it is, it also feels unnatural. We're never meant to be completely free of radiation. It surrounds us. It shapes us. Life evolved in it. But now we take one step higher. And even that next level, barely above harmless, marks the beginning of the climb. A climb that, as you'll see, gets deadly faster than most people realize. Level 1. Natural Background Radiation At level 1, radiation becomes part of daily life. Quiet, invisible, and constant. This is the dose you absorb simply by existing on Earth. It comes from three main sources. Cosmic rays from space, radioactive elements in the ground, and even trace isotopes inside your body. On average, a human receives around 0.1 to 0.3 microsieverts per hour, adding up to about 2 to 3 millisieverts per year. This level is considered harmless. It's so low that you'd never feel it, notice it, or detect it without special equipment. But it's always there. Every breath you take carries tiny amounts of radon gas. Every step you make across granite rock gives off slight radiation. Even bananas contain potassium-40, a naturally radioactive isotope. To put it in perspective, lying on the grass under the sun, flying in a plane, or sleeping next to someone, all these expose you to tiny radiation doses. A flight from New York to London, for example, delivers about 40 microsieverts, roughly equivalent to a few days of background radiation all at once. Compared to level zero, where we imagined a world of total silence, level one is the first real hum of radiation. It's calm, it's natural, but it's also unavoidable. The radiation here doesn't damage cells or alter DNA. Not yet, but it lays the groundwork. Because from here on out, every increase starts adding risk. Slight at first, then sharply. And the moment we step past level 1, we leave nature's baseline behind. Level 2. Elevated exposure. Everyday activities. Level 2 is where radiation goes from passive background noise to something we start adding to our lives. Still small, still safe, but no longer just natural. These doses come from everyday human activities, and they range from 1 to 100 microsieverts, depending on what you're doing. Let's say you go to the dentist. A single dental x-ray gives you around 5 microsieverts. That's more radiation than you'd get from an entire day of just living on Earth, but it happens in under a second. Still, it's low enough that it poses no real threat. Now picture boarding a commercial airplane. During a typical cross-country flight, you'll absorb between 30 and 50 microsieverts just from cosmic rays at high altitude. The higher you go, the less atmospheric shielding you have, and the more radiation reaches your body. Pilots and flight attendants often receive more annual radiation than nuclear plant workers. Even seemingly harmless choices like eating certain foods add to your exposure. Bananas, Brazil nuts, even your drinking water can contain trace radioactive elements. The difference from level 1? Here, we're not just surrounded by radiation, we're choosing to interact with it. It's subtle and still far from dangerous, but it's no longer passive. These tiny doses accumulate slowly, and for most people, they're nothing to worry about. But what happens when exposure isn't optional, when we start using radiation as a tool? That's where we head next, and the doses jump sharply. Level 3, Medical Imaging, Controlled Bursts. At level 3, radiation steps out of the background and becomes a tool, precise, intentional, and powerful. This level spans 100 microsieverts to 10 millisieverts, and it's where we start using radiation to see inside the body. The stakes are higher, but so are the benefits. A chest x-ray delivers about 100 microsieverts. 
That's the same dose you'd absorb in roughly a month of natural background radiation, condensed into a split-second flash. A mammogram gives about 400 microsieverts, and a CT scan? That's a leap. A full-body CT can expose you to 10,000 to 30,000 microsieverts, or 10 to 30 millisieverts in just minutes. These doses are not dangerous on their own, but they're no longer negligible. Each scan carries a small, carefully calculated risk. For most people, that risk is outweighed by the diagnostic power these scans offer. Still, it's radiation on a scale that begins to matter. Imagine walking through an airport scanner. Now imagine standing in a room where a machine concentrates that energy into your chest, abdomen, or brain. It's fast, efficient, and if you need it, potentially life-saving. But unlike the scattered radiation in food or on airplanes, this is focused, direct, measured in millisieverts instead of microsieverts. We're still well below danger, but we've crossed a psychological line. Radiation is now something we aim at ourselves, trusting the science, hoping the benefits outweigh the cost. Because just beyond this level, the cost stops being theoretical and starts becoming physical. Level 4. Occupational Limit. Maximum Legal Dose. At level 4, radiation crosses from incidental exposure into the realm of regulated risk. These are the doses that workers in high radiation environments, like nuclear power plants, medical facilities, or uranium mines, are legally allowed to receive. We're now in the 1 to 50 millisievert range, and the stakes are higher. To the human body, this level doesn't cause immediate symptoms. You won't feel sick. You won't burn. But what's happening at the cellular level is different. DNA begins to take hits. The body can usually repair the damage, but the more exposure you receive, the higher the odds of long-term consequences, particularly cancer. Take power plant technicians at Fukushima. In the early days of the crisis, many workers received doses between 20 and 50 millisieverts as they worked to stabilize the reactors. These weren't accidental exposures. They were accepted risks. Medical workers administering radiation therapy or imaging patients may accumulate similar doses over time. This is also the threshold where governments step in. Most countries limit occupational exposure to 20 to 50 millisieverts per year, depending on the job. At this point, radiation is no longer harmless background noise or a tool used in medicine. It's a measurable hazard. We're still below the levels that cause acute symptoms. But the danger here is cumulative. Exposure doesn't need to be sudden to be serious. It can creep in quietly, year by year. And beyond this level, we start leaving safety behind and enter zones where symptoms begin to show. Level 5 Early Biological Effects The First Symptoms At Level 5, radiation stops being invisible. The dose is now high enough to cause measurable biological effects even if exposure is brief. We're in the range of 100 to 500 millisieverts, and for the first time, cells begin to struggle. This is the threshold where the body starts to feel it. At 100 millisieverts, the risk of developing cancer rises. Statistically small, but no longer theoretical. At 250 millisieverts, you may see changes in blood chemistry. And by 500 millisieverts, symptoms like fatigue, nausea, and decreased white blood cell counts can begin to appear. Now imagine standing just outside the reactor at Chernobyl for a few minutes during the first hour of the disaster. Some early workers received doses in this exact range. They didn't collapse immediately, but their bodies began a silent breakdown. The immune system weakens, the body repairs slower, DNA damage increases, and the long-term consequences can show up years later. This level isn't fatal, not yet, but it leaves a mark. Unlike medical imaging or background exposure, radiation at this intensity starts to interfere with normal biological function. You won't necessarily feel pain, but something inside you changes. We've moved from passive risk to active damage, from measuring safety to managing harm. And the line we're about to cross? That's where symptoms stop being mild, and survival starts depending on timing, treatment, and luck. Level 6, Acute Radiation Syndrome. The body fights back. At level 6, the body stops absorbing radiation quietly. Exposure between 500 millisieverts and 1 sievert pushes the body into a full-blown crisis. This is where acute radiation syndrome, or ARS, begins. At doses around 700 to 1,000 millisieverts, your bone marrow, the factory for your immune system, starts to shut down. White blood cell production drops. Your ability to fight infection collapses. You may not feel it immediately, but within hours to days, symptoms appear. Nausea, vomiting, weakness, and in some cases, internal bleeding. One vivid example comes from the Fukushima Daiichi disaster. Several plant workers received exposures between 600 and 1,000 millisieverts during emergency containment operations.
They didn't collapse on the spot, but over the following days, their blood counts dropped, and recovery required months of monitoring and care. At this level, survival is still possible, but not guaranteed. The risk of long-term health damage increases significantly, especially if the dose is received all at once. The danger isn't just what the radiation hits, it's what it prevents your body from doing. Repairing, defending, recovering. This is the turning point. We're no longer talking about rare side effects or elevated risks. We're talking about biological systems and failure, where every hour matters and treatment becomes critical. Level 6 is the threshold where radiation becomes a true medical emergency. And what comes next? Pushes the body beyond its natural limits. Level 7, severe exposure, survival in question. At level 7, the body begins to break down in ways it can't easily recover from. Radiation doses between 1 and 4 sieverts, 1,000 to 4,000 millisieverts, trigger a violent biological response. This is where acute radiation syndrome becomes life-threatening. At this level, symptoms appear quickly, within hours, intense nausea, vomiting, dizziness, and a sudden drop in blood pressure. Over the next few days, your hair may fall out, your immune system collapses, and internal organs start to malfunction. Without medical intervention, survival becomes uncertain, especially above three sieverts. Now imagine being one of the first responders at the Chernobyl disaster. Firefighters and engineers who rushed toward the exposed reactor core absorbed two to four sieverts in less than an hour. Many of them appeared normal at first, even heroic, but within days they were hospitalized, suffering burns, organ damage, and in some cases, fatal infections. For those near the four sievert mark, death occurred within weeks. This isn't just about high numbers, it's about the speed and depth of damage. Cells don't have time to repair. Systems don't have time to recover. The body enters a kind of biological freefall. Level 7 isn't a guarantee of death, but it's close. With full hospital care, some people survive. Without it, odds drop fast. Every second counts. And beyond this level, survival stops being a question of treatment and starts becoming a matter of raw chance. Level 8. Lethal Exposure. No margin for error. At level 8, the line between survival and death disappears. Radiation doses between 4 and 10 sieverts, 4,000 to 10,000 millisieverts, cause catastrophic damage to the human body. Even with immediate advanced medical care, the odds of survival are grim. Within minutes of exposure, severe symptoms begin. Violent vomiting, burning skin, blinding headaches, and complete disorientation. The body's internal systems, circulatory, gastrointestinal, immune, start collapsing simultaneously. Bone marrow function is obliterated. Organs begin to shut down. At doses above six sieverts, survival becomes almost impossible. Real-world examples are chilling. In 1999, during the Tokai Mura nuclear accident in Japan, plant workers Hisashi Uchi and Masato Shinohara were exposed to estimated doses between six and ten sieverts during an uncontrolled nuclear reaction. Their bodies began failing immediately. Uchi suffered repeated organ failure, loss of skin, and eventually brain damage. Despite intensive medical intervention, he died after 83 days in a state of continuous suffering. Shinohara lasted longer, but not much. This level doesn't just damage tissue, it destroys the body's ability to recover. Even skin cells stop regenerating. Internal bleeding becomes unstoppable, and the central nervous system begins to degrade. Level 7 was a race against time, but level 8? There is no race, only fallout. Even the best doctors in the world can only slow what's coming. The body simply can't endure this much chaos. And what lies beyond level 8 crosses into territory where death is no longer delayed. It's delivered instantly. Level 9, instant fatality, beyond rescue. Level 9 is where the body loses its ability to even begin a response. Radiation exposure between 10 and 30 sieverts, 10,000, 30,000 millisieverts, delivers so much energy so rapidly that death becomes almost immediate. Not minutes, not hours, sometimes seconds. At this level, the central nervous system is overwhelmed almost instantly. Victims may collapse within moments, experiencing seizures, unconsciousness, or respiratory failure. The blood vessels rupture. The gastrointestinal tract is obliterated. Skin begins to slough off. There is no time for nausea, no time for symptoms to develop because the body has no chance to react. One of the most infamous examples comes from the 1945 Los Alamos criticality accident. Physicist Louis Sloton accidentally triggered a brief uncontrolled reaction with the so-called demon core. He received an estimated dose of between 10 and 21 sieverts in under a second. 
Witnesses reported a blue flash of light. Sloton felt a wave of heat. Nine days later, after total organ failure, he was dead. These doses are not survivable. Even with the best emergency care, damage to the brain, spine, and circulatory system is too severe. Death typically follows within hours, sometimes faster. This isn't radiation as a slow killer. The body doesn't shut down gradually, it crashes. And the final level? It's worse still. Not because it kills faster, but because it erases everything. The body, the structure, even the trace of what once stood. Kun. Level 10. Total Annihilation. Biological Erasure. Level 10 is the absolute ceiling. Radiation exposure above 30 sieverts doesn't just kill, it erases. At this level, the energy released is so intense that the human body isn't simply overwhelmed. It's destroyed on a structural level. Within milliseconds, internal organs begin to liquefy. Blood vessels rupture across the body. Skin and muscle tissues are burned from the inside out. Consciousness is gone before the body even knows it's dying. There is no pain because the nervous system is instantly disabled. This kind of exposure only occurs in the most extreme scenarios. Direct detonation zones of nuclear weapons, unshielded reactor cores during meltdown, or standing within feet of an uncontrolled criticality event. During the SL-1 reactor explosion in Idaho, 1961, one operator received a dose estimated to exceed 100 sieverts. The force of the explosion embedded his body in the ceiling. There was no chance of survival, only recovery of remains. At this level, even protective gear is useless. Steel melts, concrete cracks. What happens here is not injury, it's vaporization. Tissue disintegrates, DNA is shredded. The body ceases to function not over days or hours, but in the span of a heartbeat. Level 10 is not a radiation dose you survive, it's one you disappear in. No treatment, no delay, no recovery. This is the end of the scale, not because science says so, but because beyond this point, there's simply nothing left to measure.